Good morning and welcome to Boot 2020 here in Dusseldorf, Germany. Today we're going to have a look around the three recently launched Axapar 37 Mark II models, uh, experience the revolution as they've been telling us. Today we have in front of us here the 37XC, which is the cross cabin to replace the outgoing Mark I cabin and sport cabin. This is the enclosed wheelhouse version with the forward facing windscreen and twin outboard power. As you see her at the moment, she's around 260,000 euros with the options specified and we'll talk through those when we go up and have a look on board. Looking across here, we have the sun top option where you'll see the opening T-top and the walk around design with an open cockpit. And another example here with the Miami blue Brabus hull color option again with the sport top option. Axpar tell us there's around 100 small changes to the outgoing Mark I model. And as you walk around the boat, it's easy to see how they really have improved on what was a hugely successful model. Um, the brand itself has built now 2,400 boats plus from their uh, inception with the 24, 28 and 37 models. It honestly is one of the fastest growing marine brands in the world and we're very excited to be working with them. A revised hull design underneath, making for a softer ride, not that the Mark I version at all was anything to complain about. A twin step hull underneath, great performance and they're telling us in, uh, the efficiency on this new boat is around a 10% improvement over the outgoing model, both in fuel efficiency and performance in general. The gunnel height has increased slightly and the rubbing straight design has, in, has changed here so we have this heavy duty grey rubber section running all the way down the boat making coming alongside no problem at all and we have here on the aft quarters an additional rubbing band that runs around the bathing platform. It's a great looking boat. New uh, window line on the cabin roof, so they've lowered the height, so aesthetically a little bit more aggressive looking than the Mark I version. And we'll head on up and take a look inside. So you can see here with the Miami blue hull, the standard boat is all white with the option for a grey or a blue finish in the Brabus colour trim packages. Standard suggested horsepower on each of the models starts with a pair of Mercury 300 V8 outboards. This was a model launched new to the market last year by Mercury. They repute to be 10% saving on fuel over the outgoing straight six Verado engines. Um, and there is then the option on these boats to step up to twin 350s, which is the supercharged inline six engine. Uh, gain about a knot and a half on the top speed as that option. Standard engines are white with the upgrade here to a painted white finish from the factory so it maintains your warranties. Just gives the boat a little bit more of a fresher feel. So here we are up close with the 37XC. You'll notice immediately on the side here that the sliding doors are significantly bigger, I would say around 30% increase in the aperture, so very uh, easy to get in and out. And if you're standing over there on the starboard side at the helm, great visibility, certainly if you're running short-handed, perhaps on your own. Easy access from the helm out to put a centerline rope on when coming alongside. Some new changes up in the bow, so we now have the option for a cushion here on the anchor locker. This boat has the further additional storage box and sun pad extension, which is this cushion here you see in the middle. And then a cushion there with a small opening window to the lower deck cabin. The side rails here are an option, as you see here with a stainless steel finish. 
and when we go down to the Miami Blue Boat you'll see done in the Brabus Black. Uh, one of the most eagerly awaited features on this boat was the addition of gold wing doors. You'll see one open here. At the moment this allows a lot of natural light ventilation into the forward cabin. Really does increase the practicality of that lower deck forward cabin which we'll notice when we go inside. If you don't take the uh, gold wing doors the moulding is still there and we'll see that in one of the other boats we'll look at in a minute. There is a large skylight here behind the doors which lets natural light down into the aft end of the forward cabin. And you'll see this newly designed hard top. It's got a, um, a rain channel that runs all the way around the outside. Also doubles up as a handy handhold, really somewhere to grab hold of with your fingertips. And you'll see up top this switch to the crossbars as an option for carrying water sports gear. You put cycle rack up there, even an inflatable tender. If you're keeping the boat on a swinging mooring, I need a dinghy to get in and out for access. Note on the sides here, if you take the side deck rail option, as we see here, you do lose a, a midships cleat, which would otherwise be on the side deck up here. But you've still got plenty of places to tie up your fenders. There's still that all-important midships cleat there by the door to run your spring lines. You'll notice here on the aft section, good sized bathing platform both sides of the outboards. Standard boat is finished in this one white non-slip finish on the decks with the option to upgrade to an S-Tech synthetic teak which has inlaid detailing throughout and we'll see that on one of the other boats. See great wide side decks, no need to shuffle along sideways and we'll start on the bow and work backwards. So the option for an anchor pack, we lift the locker up here, which includes now a fixed winch rather than a folding system, and a bow roller, controls for the winch here, tucked in on the starboard side. You'll notice the locker is now sectioned off, so the anchor sits up forward, and we have this handy locker here for storing fenders and general boating paraphernalia. There is the forthcoming option for a galley pack, and also the factory are currently exploring the option for a hot water system to go with the shower. We believe at the moment that this locker then will be taken up by a gas bottle and a hot water cylinder. But we'll find that out uh, more in the coming weeks. Shore power system is an upgrade here. So we've got a plug-in socket somewhere to store the electric lead. And you'll see the breakers there for the main input. Handy little rope storage here. And tuck down there the leg for the optional table that sits up here in the bow. If you go for the option here for the additional sunbox, you'll notice this is a prototype, so we expect a better finish when this is finally launched as an official option, but it does give a much bigger sun pad here for lying out on the bow. And as part of the AV packages here, you have the option to take extra speakers here on the foredeck. Walking aft, you'll notice the addition now of this step in the bulwark to make access over the side a little bit more straightforward. Let's head on inside and take a look at the main saloon. Send some lights on for you. So we have a comfort pack on this particular boat, which you'll notice these soft lining panels in the ceiling, it gives a real high feel of quality in here and it's a well worthwhile option to consider and um, also the addition of LED ambient lighting you'll see on the options list either specified for each cabin individually and then there's an option for the side decks as well you'll notice immediately here on the aft cabin option much bigger access into the back back double bed there so the cushion lifts up out of the way stores up there on the strap and allows immediate access to this large double bed it's a fixed double, batteries and services stored underneath. Really good sized step there to climb in, allowing you to go down forwards or, uh, or turn around and in backwards. 
and tucked down the back there there's a, an additional locker escape hatch if you like from the top if you were using it as a storeroom and you had people sitting here in the saloon you could still access the water sports gear and then we've got fixed windows both sides to allow natural light in with the blinds for privacy in the evening so the quality improvement over the mark one boat is really noticeable with uh, things like the internal locker lids all finished in um, nicely molded gel coats like we see on the on the hatch here lots of little practical touches throughout it's hard to describe everything really other than to say it all works very well and a real evolution of this model so with the hatch closed here we can see immediately the panoramic vision all the way around this boat when you're running on the water say despite whatever the weather conditions are like great visibility it rides very flat little bow lift at all due to the hull steps so you always maintain this vision no matter what speed you're doing various options on the navigation package so we have here the option with the twin chart plotters basic system starts with a single display and then we have the option here for two individual units or a glass bridge system which we'll talk about on one of the other boats we look at high quality LED push button switches so these control wipers, washers navigation systems etc the option for the mercury vessel view gauge here in addition to the plotters uh, that comes in a package with the addition of the active trim system for the engines which is controlled off the plotter screens and also this anti-theft we have a look down here below the steering wheel this sort of anti-theft immobiliser system which is an upgrade DSC radio again from Simrad with that uh, handset over on the starboard side and then we have a joystick for the trim tabs and an optional bow thruster it's a tilt steering wheel here this is a standard finish for a boat without the Brabus pack and we'll have a look at what the Brabus pack gives you on one of the other boats and you'll notice over here a push button for the electric roof it just makes opening and closing the central saloon here a little bit more straightforward and allows you to open the roof into certain positions if you don't want a fully enclosed or fully open boat. The helm seats here are currently configured with one aft and one forward. They obviously can face both forward when you're running and you have this drop down bolster cushion if you prefer to sit and obviously lifts up for standing. There's a nice footrest down here below the helm to allow you somewhere to get comfortable no matter how tall you are. Obviously in port both seats spin round to give you the option then to dine everybody around the central table. We open this up to see it's a great size. A real practical space if you've got six people on the boat here very usable. There is the option here for a galley pack which on the original Mark 1 boat would mean losing the uh, seating here on the starboard side but Axpar being very clever with the new design and this will now sit centre line here where the table is positioned so the seating won't change and you have the option it's hard to see on the picture here let's say this is coming in the not too distant future but there will be a, a two burner gas hob tucked under this black cover here and then underneath some storage and you see again over this side maintaining the seating we have a storage box here on the starboard side handy for provisions you notice this lift up step so that once the seat is configured in its running position we have a seat and a footrest and then tucked underneath here below the table you see a small locker over there on the starboard side. This boat's got the um, the second level of upgrade on the premium stereo, so we've got an additional subwoofer here. So the basic stereo system is four speakers here in the saloon, two in the aft end of the roof, and two up forward. 
we then have the option for a further two speakers in the bow and the stern with an, amp uh, an amplifier. And then the final premium version is with a five channel amp and a subwoofer, which is now inside. So it's a great space. Again, for part of the comfort pack here, little finishing panels on the side. Nice stainless steel cup holders. So perhaps the biggest change on the boat is moving forward here into the bow cabin. So the cabin itself is standard, but it has increased significantly in volume. So we still have our double bed forward with these steps either side lifting up to give a little bit more space on the headboard end of the bed. Again, part of the comfort pack here with these feature panels, both sides of the bed. Again, the option for LED feature lighting. And this particular boat has the Webasto diesel heating system, so you'll see outlets there up in the bow. The opening bow window here. And if we turn around and look aft, we have this good size L-shaped seating on the starboard side hiding the toilet underneath. So electric, electric toilet here with a small waste tank. The switch panel's moved from down by your feet to this eye line here, so much, uh, much more straightforward for those of you struggling to see, perhaps when you're underway. And then the option here for a sink in the cabin and a small storage locker underneath. It's a very usable space, and you'll notice above us with the uh, with the gold wing doors just how much natural light is available from those skylights above. And with the doors open, obviously very good ventilation in here. We'll talk through as we go on to one of the other models on display here at the show how the um, the bathroom package works, as there then is an enclosure in this area. So if we move back up into the main saloon, uh, one more thing to point out here underneath this seat is the, um, the pull-out fridge option. They are investigating whether it's possible to fit a larger full height fridge into that locker for those that want to stay on board for longer. So moving on out, we'll take a look at the aft deck. As with all 37s, there's various different layouts here. So this particular boat obviously spec with the aft cabin and the option then for the cushions here on the top in a silver text finish. We'll take a look up top here. We have a centerline radar arch, the option for the remote control spotlight there. The radar is also an upgrade. The radar post itself is fixed, but you can drop back the centerline lighting goalpost here if you've got a bridge height clearance or for road transport. Standard horn, you can see here with the roof bars running across the boat now, very easy storage for say paddle boards and blow up tenders. It's also easy to highlight, highlight the side deck gutters here for the rain, rain channels running forward and also makes a very handy Grab, uh, grab rail when you're walking around the sides of the boat. For storage in port, you have a, uh, a clip-on cover that sits on top of the roof here, just to keep uh, bird mess off. And uh, perhaps in the winter, just an additional layer of thermal insulation. Climbing back down, we can see here, fire extinguisher storage. And as with the previous model, these large handy arc pins. So you can notice the detailing improvements here with a nice molded internal finish. The option for a transom shower here, connected into the fresh water system, emergency bilge pump there below, and again storage for your ropes. There's a fishing rod holder option, so we have two sockets in the stern here, and then there'll be four up on the roof. Water ski frame, again is an option, 
here in stainless steel but also available in the Brabus line black depending on what colour you've gone for on your side rails. The engines are standard fly-by-wire throttles with their DTS system with the upgrade potentially to take the JPO which is their joystick propulsion system and then a further upgrade potentially to add a skyhook system for holding station waiting to go into the locks and fuel key and what have you. So from all angles it's a very very pretty if not rugged and functional look to the boat. So moving across here to the Suntop model, you'll see the option whether you take the aft cabin, which is still an option on here, or this is a storage locker and sun pad unit, which wasn't previously available on the last outgoing model. So we've now done away with our enclosed windscreen and side doors, making for a much more open boat for warmer climates. Still with the option the fully retracting roof panel here as part of the T-top. This particular boat is a manual setup so you'll see the bar up top here with a very simple twisting clam lock design so very easy to to open up just rotate that 90 degrees and pull the roof back. Fixed seating so you've got four four seats running across the back here much more ergonomic with the uh, with the handrails being taken off either side of the seats. This large GRP table. Obviously the home helm seats rotate through 180 degrees to give you social seating for dining. Then we have the option both sides for these pull out fridge drawers. Turn some lights on. See the LED lights around the decks here. So to give you an idea of what the boat looks like without the gullwing door option, we still have the glass panel here. But these are now fixed in place. And up forward it gives you an idea of how much more deck space there is if you don't take that additional storage box as an option. And again as per the previous boat, the shore power system fixed anchor. Whilst obviously having uh, deck space here is useful, I have to say I would take the additional storage box as you can never have too much uh, space for storing cleaning gear, general boating equipment, certainly if you're going to consider the hot water and, and the galley pack, potentially losing some of that forward locker, it does make it very um, usable on the cabin, certainly. Just let this power up to show you. So this is the basic navigation set up with just a single screen perhaps if you're running in the Mediterranean and you don't need so much in the way of navigation equipment for long distances it's more than sufficient it's a very, very clean dashboard everything's kept to a minimum falls to hand and if you imagine sitting at the helm the visibility is great the windscreen doesn't fall through your eye line and everything's nicely to hand. You'll notice a different color silver tech, so we moved to the Storm upholstery here, which is a darker, darker gray. 
looking into the bow cabin, so this feels now noticeably smaller. So we've lost the skylight that we had. Here and obviously with the doors. Having been removed, we now have just a splash in the molding, both sides, where the handles would be. There is going to be an option for blinds for these windows, obviously to give privacy when sleeping and using the toilet facilities. So controls here, the optional fusion system, plug sockets as part of the shore power, 12 volt chargers for mobile phones, etc. They've moved the battery switches here now underneath the helm seats, making it access a little bit easier than on the previous boat. Moving across here to the sun top in the Miami blue, you can now see the additional option of a wet bar rather than the aft storage locker. We lift this up first on the on the port side, good size sink, very deep box and you can add a griddle there on the starboard. Again storage underneath. You notice the deck lockers here on the aft section so great for storing water sports equipment, wakeboards etc if you don't need the overnight accommodation. I will point out on the back here, this is the, the Brabus line finish on the, on the rails. So we've got black painted stainless steel ski arch. And then the option for these with a seat as well, if you want to have uh, drop down seats in the aft cockpit. you notice here on the decks, we have the S-Tech package and you see the nice inlaid detailing. these screens up for you so and this is the top premium um, navigation package so we've actually gone to a glass bridge helm so these screens are now an all-in-one combined unit behind the glass panel it's very slick looking for those that really do want the best of everything again with the upgrade to take a VHF um, and a radar unit and everything falling nicely to hand. This particular boat has got the JPO system, which is this is Mercury's joystick system, pushing it sideways. The engine's actually steer independently to give you complete sideways movement. It's not using the bow thruster. It's all done on the engines. Twist the top and it's engaging one ahead, one astern, and some counteracting with the steering. It's very clever how it works. Same with the skyhook system. It then takes a GPS fix and will hold the boat, perhaps in a river or estuary waiting for access through a lock. Again, part of the Brabus uh, pack, we have this nice Alcantara style finish on the wheel. A little detailing such as on the handle here. Nice embossed Brabus logo. And you'll see on the seats here, some nice Brabus detailing. And that runs throughout the boat. Lots of little panels. Side rails on the boat here, again in the bra uh, black Brabus finish. Just makes the boat a little bit more striking looking. Obviously the stainless is a little bit more classic. And you'll see on the bow here, this is the optional sunshade and they do a stern, a stern version as well for warmer climates. The optional table shown there. Show the access in through the side doors here is great. We're coming in off the deck, easy to step down. 
and we see immediately on this boat the optional heads compartment so this is a, a screen that runs across the boat permanently fixed and then we've got this opening door which in its current position obviously allows access straight through up there to main deck and with the door closed off we're now in the cabin itself you'll notice it still has a real bright and airy feel in here so it's very functional as a double cabin um, you'll notice the sink is now gone that's moved into the bathroom itself and we still maintain the skylight above us so it's a very bright and airy cabin and I have to say this is a, a really serious off, um, option to consider on the on the price list. Looking here over on the port side we have the option for a shower currently available only as cold water but I say the factory at the moment are looking at a hot water tank option so this door pulls across to create the, um, the shower compartment it's not full height standing headroom you have a seat there to sit and use the shower but it does mean if you're staying away on the boat for a few days it becomes a little bit more functional without the need to rely on marina facilities and if we shut the door here we can see the toilet has now located onto the starboard side rather than where it was under the seat with a small sink here tucked behind monitoring system for the waste tank the electric flush toilet system there still easy access to all your electrics it does make quite a usable space let's climb climb out and show you the access from here so there's a day head you've got guests on board you can leave the privacy of your cabin up forward there still easy access See the aft sunshade here available on the options list. And we'll just walk around and take a look at the spider, which is the open open version of the same boat. So you'll see this aggressive hull wrap which is available as a, a factory option. It takes the launch colours for the boat when they first introduced it to us as dealers back late last year. Really does give the boat a standout look. It's a great looking boat. Certain markets where they don't need the roof or the internal protection of the cabin. This is going to be an awesome option. This is the turquoise exterior silver tex upholstery. We'll head back over to the XE just to finish off our tour here today. So just to recap, say new Mark II Axapar 37 available with the three different layouts in the spider the sun top and the xc here in front of us we're looking at a realistic on the water price with twin engines of somewhere around 260 to 280 thousand euros including tax with the twin 300 mercury v8 outboards and a nice specification and the availability on this boat has become extremely limited for the 2020 season given its popularity since um, first seen in the press, so towards the back end of last year. 
Uh, we're now looking look at uh, midsummer deliveries. So there is still the opportunity to get on the water this summer if you're quick. Uh, the configurator online on the Axpar website will soon be updated to allow you to spec your own boat. Alternatively, if you get in touch with us directly, we have a price list where we can show you all the various options and configure a boat to your own um, your own needs. My name's James Lumley from Axapar London Group, based in our Swanwick office, just outside Southampton. We're one of the main UK distributors for Axapar products, so we've always got generally a selection of brokerage, new and used display on site, or certainly a client's boat locally that we can we can get on board to um, to experience up close. My uh, mobile number, if you wish to ask any questions, is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven, or my email is james at axaparlondongroup.com, and I can send you a full library of images that we've taken here at the show, as well as the recent motorboat and yachting review of the boat running on the water, back from the dealer launch just before Christmas. Hope you've enjoyed the tour today. There's another four days still here at the Dusseldorf show, so if you've got the opportunity to come over, the show runs through until Sunday. It's only 15 minutes from the airport this end, and the UK flight over to Dusseldorf is only around £60 each way. So with demand so, um, so high on this model, the opportunity to see them outside dealer showrooms through the course of 2020 season will be very limited, so we would urge you to come and take a look here if you have the t uh, opportunity to. Hope you enjoyed the tour and we look forward to hearing from you.